we get started, what we may have to do in the future, uh, if you have a question for Pat, we'll see how the audio goes here. Um, we may have to have you come up and ask the question, much like we did when we uh, uh, did this before, um, announcing the uh, plan back in December. So anyway, at that, we're going to get started. Um, Coach Bolotti, I would say you want to start off and uh, make a statement. Uh, we'll follow that with uh, Coach Kelly, and then we'll uh, open up for questions. I was afraid you were going to say that. I, um, well, uh, after 20 years, um, obviously I've decided that it's time for me to step down and move on. Uh, the challenge of a new job awaits and one that I'm excited about and certainly faced with a little bit of trepidation. But I, one, I feel very comfortable in turning the program over to Chip Kelly. Uh, Chip has earned my respect and the admiration of our coaches and players during his short time here. Um, I think that uh, this is something that I've been contemplating for a couple of years. Um, it is not something I've done easily or without a lot of thought. And uh, with the effects it would have on uh, the football program, uh, my family, the coaches and all that. And I think, again, I've reached uh, a calm in that regard with that decision based on uh, where our football program is, the hands that I'm turning it over into the needs of our athletic department and the desire uh, to work with President Frommeyer and our new president, La Riviera, coming in uh, and to have the opportunity to work with Pat Kilkenny in a uh, learning mode for the next three months uh, before assuming the duties of AD on July 1st. Um, obviously, my expertise is in coaching and teaching, and I will learn about some of the other things. I've been involved with fundraising here since I became the head coach, actually even before as an offensive coordinator. And I feel very comfortable that that's something uh, that I will uh, be able to help in. Obviously, there's a need for that given the economic climate. Um, but I think that our, our house here in athletics is in good hands. Uh, we have a plan. Uh, we're going to work that plan. Uh, we're obviously, we're building and continuing to improve our facilities to attract the best players across the nation in all sports and to provide them a positive experience and the opportunity to get their degree and compete at the highest level uh, of college athletics. Kelly? Yeah, I'm just, first off, I just want to thank uh, Mike and Pat Kilkenny and President Frohmeyer for uh, really looking to me and giving me the opportunity to be the next head football coach here at the University of Oregon. It's a tremendous honor. Um, very rarely do you have an opportunity to become a head coach in college football. And to be able to come into a situation like this, usually you get an opportunity to be a head coach because you have to turn the program around. Um, you get a chance to take a team that was finished ninth in the country last year, um, is one of the preeminent programs in the country, um, has a name no matter where you are, wherever you travel through this country, people know who the University of Oregon is. And to be uh, picked to be the successor to Mike Bellotti is, uh, you know, it's really tough for me to put into words. Um, big shoes to fill. Uh, but as I told the team yesterday, it, it, it's not me filling the shoes. Um, it's 105 players that we have in, in the outstanding coaching staff that we have. So uh, I'm going to need a lot of help doing it. Uh, he set the bar very, 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 very high um, for success. Uh, one of the most respected coaches in the country. And the one thing that's comforting through the whole situation is that I know I'm going to need some help in this. And he's only going to be about a... Uh, it's hop, skip, and a jump away. So it, it's a uh, short nine iron. Short nine iron. <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's just a win-win situation. When it was presented to me by Mike back in uh, November, it was you know, kind of you had to catch yourself to be honest with you. It's an uh, extreme honor. I'm just excited to get going. Before we get into questions, I should offer uh, Pat Kilkenny an opportunity. Pat, do you have anything you want to say first before uh, questions? Uh, I, I couldn't be more thrilled for Oregon athletics and our Oregon football program. Uh, it, we couldn't have a better outcome. The future's bright. Short and sweet. With that, uh, <laughs> ask the door any questions. Mike Bellotti, normally I call you Coach. Uh, Mr. Bellotti, I guess. I'm coach, Coach sounds a lot better to me, but that's all right. <laughs> when Bill Walsh stepped down as the coordinator's head coach, he said his biggest regret was that he didn't give it some time before he decided that he was going up and, and it was great to get another coordinator like or not in Oregon. Do you feel like you gave it the, the time that you needed to feel that the decision was ever 
question at all, or do you feel that you gave the time that you, you know you can live with this decision ten years down the road? Um, this was not a rush decision. I gave it time. Uh, I, having said that, I don't know that you ever know in, until a couple of years down the road if it's a great decision. And I, and I say that very honestly. I'm very comfortable with my decision. There's a peace and a calm in my soul in, the, in that regard um, about this decision. And I, obviously, it's because of the people that I'm involved with. Uh, I have great respect for Dave Fromeyer. appreciated the opportunity to work with him over the course of his tenure here. Uh, to be involved with great people, uh, Bill Moose, Dan Williams, Pat Kilkenny in the AD roles, and just, uh, and, and I was fortunate to surround myself with great people too. Um, I think that I have done the due diligence. This really came up in my mind two years ago. Uh, and it wasn't actually uh, with the departure of Bill Moose, it was just my own point in time in life. So uh, I do think I've thought this out. I think I feel very comfortable and, uh, you know, whether I'm here five years or 10 years or whatever the case may be, I'm very comfortable at this point. For me, this was a great decision. Can you take us the evolution of thinking? I think you said you were leaning one way, maybe it's more easy, and then got closer to the center. Well, I think any time you look, you know, when you've done something for 36 years, it's pretty daunting to consider doing something else. And I think, uh, you know, this is a career path and a career choice for me that uh, growing up, it was sort of the natural evolution of life. You are an assistant coach, a coordinator, head coach, and an AD. And then 20 years ago, I thought that's not the right way because the AD jobs were changing. The evolution of what that person did changed. Um, not that it's come back. And in my mind, what I'm going to do is provide leadership and guidance and uh, structure and organization. Uh, I'm going to rely heavily on the people around me, just like I did as a football coach. I let the coaches coach. I'm going to let the people in this department work. Uh, we'll have expectations and guidelines, and obviously uh, we'll need to perform. And that's true for everybody, coaches and staff and support staff, everybody. But I, I do think that uh, it's a right time for me, uh, for my family. Um, one of the things that you don't realize, you do realize it, it sort of creeps up on you is um, life does pass you by as a football coach. It's a 24-7, 365 kind of job. Um, that is is totally enjoyable when you win and again um, i think it's and somebody asked me well was there uh, a choice uh, to go out or was there pressure because next year's team could be a really good team or you won your last game and <coughs> those things are all factors but not one uh, deal breaker nothing really entered into it per se it was more just the timing um two years ago i was disgusted with our program, in all honesty, my program, and felt like we need to do something different. And I felt like walking away and walking away was not an answer. And uh, as I felt like we performed and did some really good things, I also looked at the time available to myself and my family, me and my family, and felt like I could do some different things. Um, I feel that my skill set uh, deals with talking to people, deals with hopefully some motivation and some direction and some organization and some accountability. And those things will not change given the new position. And I'll have to learn some new things, obviously, and understand a little bit better the inner workings of the department. But overall, it's been a two-year process in my mind. Uh, when I first, about mid-season, I thought of it this year. Uh, and it really didn't have a lot to do with the season. It just is a sense of well-being. Uh, that's very simple. I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, the last opportunity for me to get the team together was yesterday. It's the last day of class. We go into finals next week. Um, in the plan, my plan had been <clears throat> to make a decision at that time to allow, if I wasn't going to coach, Chip to get the, the, another, the next coach in here uh, his offensive coordinator, however he wants to structure that, give them a chance to go through spring ball as a trial run. I wouldn't do it in June or July and then allow have to hire a guy who had not been with our team during spring football. So my my thing was really guided by my instincts for football. When did you decide? Uh, officially, really Thursday night uh, to be announced Friday morning. I, I had uh, a back out bailout plan set in place with everybody, but I had discussed uh, extensively with President Frohmeyer on Thursday, had talked to Pat Kilkenny,
talked to Melinda Greer, talked to family, staff, friends, people, and the accumulated knowledge I gained from that led me to make that decision. That was all Thursday? Uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday, I talked with President Frohmeyer, and that was, uh, I think, our discussion was very positive, and I felt good about it and felt like I could do the things that uh, would make us successful. Uh, yeah, I think, I think, well, I wanted to keep Chip Kelly very first and foremost. I feel he's an outstanding football coach, great organizational skills, great recruiter, uh, thorough, innovative, competent, and all those things. And does he have some things to learn? Yes, but those, those will happen. He has all the necessary criteria to be successful as a head football coach at the Division One level, and we're very pleased and happy to have him. Um, so that eased that. At the end of the season, uh, I was probably leaning 60-40, 75-25 to go out. As you go on in the off season and go speak at clinics and talk to football coaches and recognize what our life is about and the ability to change lives and what you're involved with, that's a harder thing. And so um, I probably came back to a 50-50 mode. Um, but the last few weeks, um, just thought more deeply about it and didn't quite get to the mountain, didn't need a mountain. I was able to make a decision without that uh, and, and f have felt good and have had, as I said, the, the stress, and I'll say this very honestly, of, of, you know, not quite having to worry every night when I go to bed about each recruit, each coach, each player in the program and, and our next opponent. Um, I don't have a next opponent now, so that's when good. That uh, probably the last month or so when I sort of felt <laughs> like I was ready to do it. Thirty-six hours. <laughs> he had a bailout plan. No, the, the one thing that's awesome about Mike is that every step of the way, he's told me exactly where he was. And and I said before this started, and one thing I told Mike when this all came up is that because I had some opportunities to go other places, and not that I wanted to go anywhere else, is that my timeline shouldn't dictate your timeline. Is that, you know, the, what you've done for this university and what you did for me in bringing me here is you call your shot. And I was willing to wait as long as Mike wanted to wait. So. Um, the great thing about it is we've had an open lines of communication. Coach told me all along. He brought me in Wednesday and told me that he was going to meet with the president on Thursday afternoon. Thursday afternoon, he told me his plan and then said he may change his mind on his drive to work. So just tell me what you want to do. So it, it's been a, a great relationship. We have a great relationship. Um, I consider Mike a mentor. Um, it, it's, it's a, like I said earlier, it's a win-win. So um, I had no problem if he was going to stay for another season. I would have been excited to be the coordinator again next year. Yes. No, just how we we performed as a team and as a program. But I, I do want to I want to uh, reflect on neither Chip nor Pat actually ever put any pressure on me. They were awesome in the support in terms of saying, Coach, it, it's your timeline, and I feel very good about that even despite the echo, but, um, it, and there was no pressure from anybody at any juncture to leave, or in fact, more pressure to stay actually from most people, but. You talk about meeting with the president, though, and obviously there was a change there. Did that change administration have any effect on the decision? No, well, yeah, uh, you know, I think that's a great, I, I had a chance to talk to the incoming president, uh, Richard L L Riviere, uh, a couple of days ago, and I, w prior to our talking, uh, President Fromer had discussed with him, because that was one of the things that we discussed Thursday, was to just make sure the incoming president would feel good about this and would be okay, and, and they did have a discussion. Uh, Richard called me the next day, uh, aware of my decision, and was seemed to be awesome. He's very impressive. I, I was really Pleased to hear from him, obviously, and look forward to working with him. Chip, is this, uh, Mike talked about his timeline, you know, time to bring an offensive coordinator, perhaps a quarterback coach. Is there any possibility that you would 
assume both roles, or have you given that much thought at this point? Yeah, we've given, uh, I've given it all thought. You know, there's a process that you have to go through um, at any state institution in terms of a hiring process. Um, I'm going to go out and actively interview people in the in the next coming weeks, and, and then we'll, we'll hopefully have a guy in place for the 30th. So what are you looking for? What's it? Well, what are you looking for? I'm looking for the best football coach out there. But a quarterback's coach, offensive coordinator? No, I'm looking for the best football coach out there. And, and I think we have some <coughs> flexibility on the offensive side of the ball. It's obviously going to be an offensive coach that to fill him in, but I'm not going to pigeonhole myself and lock me into that. I'm just looking for this because I think there's too many good people out there. And, and I think the one lesson I learned from Mike a long time ago is that if he didn't take the time to reach out 3,000 miles away from home, I wouldn't be here. So uh, I'm going to scour the country, and I'm going to hire the best person that is the best fit for this football staff. So are you saying that the offensive coordinator could already be on the staff, or are you going to be your own offensive coordinator? That, yeah, I could be the only offensive coordinator, but I don't have to make that decision today. Time is of the essence. Time is of the essence to hire somebody. Yeah. But in terms of who's going to call the plays on September 5th, we got, we're going to, we'll work out through all that stuff. So. Would you like to have that decision made? Who's going to be calling the shots from either the, the box or down on the field? When you have a date, do you go, okay, we need to know by this date who's going to be doing the X's and O's on that? On the, the X's and O's on, on that? On the offensive coordinator. Um, the best way for me to say that is this, is that I'm sitting here because of my background on offense and that my fingerprint will always be on the offensive side of the ball. You know, the only thing I think that will change from this year to next year is hopefully we score more points. You know, and, and, and that's what I'm going to be charged with. And, and then we'll work out what's the best scenario there. We have some great coaches on our staff um, that have tremendous input. I think sometimes I get way, way, way too much credit for what we do. You know, Steve Greatwood is as good an offensive line coach as in the country. Tom Osborne, Gary Campbell. We got an outstanding group on that side of the ball. So I think it's a collective and it's a collaborative effort for everybody on the offensive side of the ball. And on game day, we'll figure that out. But by the time we're in camp, we'll know where we're going in that direction. Our team's going to be different. I talk faster than Mike. <laughs> no kidding. Mike and Chip, I have a question for both of you, Mike. You know, from one day to the next, walk away from you know, a career like that and not have any input. Do you want to do that and leave them alone, or do you want to have some involvement in Chip? How, how will you guys work together with that? You know, uh, They'll probably have to kick me out. I'll be wandering down that way most of the time out of habit. Uh, but I will not be pestering. Uh, I won't be in meetings. I won't be in any. I'll be there for them. Uh, I will be in and out of the CAS Center during the next three months, uh, moving offices, trying to. And that I may be still in that office for a while, to be honest with you. And it won't be because I want to be. I want to give Chip the opportunity to do what he does. Um, they'll be his decisions. And I, he'll be feel very comfortable, I'm sure, coming to ask me. I've never been short on advice, uh, but uh, again, it's his program. And I've, I've said this to a lot of people that, you know, when I came in and, and became the head coach, I changed some things. And people here internally said, why are you changing things? And I said, well, because now I'm the head coach, and now I can. Uh, you know, I'm sure Chip has some ideas and has to do a thing that he feels comfortable with. I've said to staff, I've said to coaches, there'll be some changes. And I'm, I'm sure that they will be for the good because eventually everybody will understand why we're doing the things that we're doing. And you have to have a plan. It has to, it has to have a central administration to a degree. Um, I, in all honesty, I think Chip will be a little bit more autocratic than I was. We get tired sometimes of getting 10 opinions and having to find light, find light and say it's one way to do it. So um, having said that, though, I, I will be there and available for them. I really think that the opportune I'm going to come back to this the decision timing wasn't good one because it, it it arrived the same time as our new president which obviously we didn't want to take anything away from that I think that's a tremendous opportunity uh, for Richard to come in and be our president and that's a huge role um, for me it was the only time I could tell my football team and it gave me it was the last possible time before spring ball and I again coming back to this I think it's very important, no matter who calls the plays, that a coach works with his players in the spring, which is a precursor to fall. It's the only time you get to practice football. So it's very, very important in terms of the development, no matter who calls the plays, of getting to evaluate personnel, getting to know that coach, Chip getting to be the head coach. Um, so I, I apologize if I rambled no. there. Uh, Mike, uh, you mentioned that you were 
has taken over as athletic director that you are going to look for uh, building excellence in, in all the programs. Between now and the time you take over, do you anticipate there are going to be any changes in the programs, any coaching changes? I, that I don't know, and to be honest with you, I will not be involved with that. Up to this point, I've been the football coach, and I don't have the experience or expertise to evaluate other programs. I will eventually on July 1st, and, and I don't, again, I don't know anything about changes. I have not involved, been involved in any discussions in that regard, but I will tell you down the road, I'll be very willing to make changes if I deem that necessary. Right now, I'm not in that loop. I'm really learning the job and President Fromer's direct directive to me was be involved with the football transition and then learn the everyday operations of the athletic department. Mike, wouldn't it be important to be at least in that loop if there were going to be some changes contemplated with the, and then there could potentially be new coaches hired too? Yes, and I think I will be in that loop in terms of, I'll be there for advice from a coaching perspective, and if we are in an interview hiring mode, I would assume I would be involved in that. But again, the other part of the decision making, I have no involvement with. Considering that you built the program into what it is today, and this team has so much to look forward to next year, how painstakingly tough was the decision to, to step down? What you did? Well, the, the, you know, the, the, the toughest thing was telling the team. It's like telling your children you're not going to be there. And, I, and the nice thing is I am going to be there. I have a different role. I will still be there for them. We, we said this in recruiting. Chip and I would sit side by side in the home and say, hey, at, at some point I will not be your coach. I will be the athletic director. Uh, I will be there for you. Uh, the values of the program and the goals and everything will not change. I know that because we've worked together. Um, and you can still come and talk to me. Uh, if you need help with anything, and your family uh, are going to be my family. And I, so I, I feel comfortable in that regard that uh, that part is just, it's a transition. There's never in my, there's never a good time to walk away. It really isn't. I mean, it's when you've done something for 36 years and it's, it's your, football coaching is not, it's not a job, it's a entire lifestyle. I mean, it really is something that consumes your time, consumes your energies and your focus and everything else, and to the degree sometimes that you neglect other things. And I, hopefully I'll be able to um, do other things with my family. Also, I, I actually look forward to enjoying some of the other sports. I haven't got a chance to watch some of the other sports play. I, I really am a sports person. I enjoy activity, and I really look forward to the opportunity to see our other sports uh, in action. What do you think your legacy is with Oregon football? Uh, that's a great question. I, that's not for me to answer. I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that we won my last game because I, I think you always, you're only as good as your last game. Well, we're okay, we're pretty good. So that that part uh, is enjoyable for me. Uh, my legacy is that I continue to build what Rich Brooks and others developed. You know, I I hope uh, I got the great opportunity to have some discussions with Len Casanova. While he was still alive, he'd come into my office and talk to me about the team. He would always ask, how are the boys? And I would tell him. And then uh, later on, I would have people talk to me about how important Kaz was in their life. And these are older men that are 50, 60, 70 years old and what an influence Kaz had on them. And my goal and my desire was to hopefully be as important in people's lives as Kaz was. And that the nice thing is there have been people over the years that have said that Oregon football, that we played hard. And I think that's something I'm proud of. I can interrupt real quick. Pat, are you still with us? Yes, I'm still here. Are you enjoying this? Anyway, yeah. I have a question I think uh, for you, Pat. Brock Mosley. Pat, just your timeline on this. I mean, is it fair to say perhaps that you're happy this is being executed now than a year from now? Ooh ready to kind of move on with your life? Well, you know, I think Mike characterized it properly that this really was about Mike Bellotti uh, in the sense that he needed to control the timing and and we were fine uh, if it, you know, if he wanted to coach one more year, he certainly deserved the 
right or opportunity to do that, or if you were ready to, you know, to obviously retire. Uh, yeah, I guess given a preference, um, all things being equal, which they never are, uh, I'm very happy with the outcome. I think, you know, we've, myself and my staff have done what we were asked to do, or at least, you know, accomplished a fair amount of what President Frontmeyer charged us with, and and I, the the opportunity to bring a special person in like Mike to build on that is, you know, I think the timing's perfect. Pat, this is uh, Sam from Channel 9. Just just wondering, do you feel at all like the forgotten man in all this? I mean, you only did build a new arena, bring college baseball back here. Do you feel ever like with everything else going on, kind of like the forgotten man among all this? No, I'm just honored to work with such a special group of people. My staff, you know, they really never get enough credit for, you know, for really making a difference and to work with people like, you know, Mike Bellotti and, and our amazing coaches that we have at the Cavs Center. No, it's, uh, when I reflect on this, this will be the most special two-plus years of my life by a multiple. So, um, and, and I'll always love Oregon and look forward to not having to stand in front of groups like you anymore and get to be in the background and, and, and be the fan that I love to be. How much are we going to see you around Eugene after the after the flight takes over your position? Well, we're going to we're going to keep a residence in Eugene. Um, and I guess the way the housing market is, that probably isn't even up to us. But uh, you know, we're planning on you know spending a fair amount of time there, and to the degree that you know I can be helpful, you know, post my uh, uh, tenure, you know, I'm glad to. Uh, stick my head in the cast center and, and if you know if there's not uh, opportunities for that I there's a lot of things that I'm interested in doing and I'm excited about the opportunity to you know quite frankly get my life back so uh, what's your timeline for a meeting with your basketball coaches and with will the decision with those programs be your decision alone will you consult with Mike at all uh, well unfortunately uh, for me you know Mike's been the football coach until you know, yesterday, today, tomorrow, whenever that actually transitions. And so all those kinds of uh, decisions have been ones that, you know, that really ultimately rest on the athletic director's shoulders. And and having said that also, I, I've consulted with, you know, President Frohnmeyer on direction of all of our programs always and received incredible insight and wisdom and, and work with my staff. So uh, I'm just not going to Really, given the timing, uh, you know, with the, at least our basketball programs, not have an opportunity to, to really consult with Coach Bellotti about it. Do you, uh, Romar, do you anticipate any changes then in the basketball programs? Well, I'm going to meet with uh, Coach Smith either tomorrow or the next day. She's traveling, and she's and uh, that's not been def decided yet. And then Coach Kent is actually still in Los Angeles today with actually with Greg Ballard, who's being honored at the going into the Pac-10 Hall of Fame today, which is a real special day for uh, Coach Kent and Greg Ballard, their teammates. And 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 I think he has some personal travel and maybe some recruiting next week, so hopefully we'll get together, you know, before next week's out and, you know, and talk about the future of, of Oregon basketball. Was this a mutual arrangement between Coach Bellotti and, and, and you, Mr. Kilkenny, about how that, that would be handled, who that would ultimately fall on? Because that would obviously be very difficult for you, Coach, to be the first thing you do is, is to make decisions like that. Well, you know, honestly, uh, I didn't know until almost the same time everybody, you know, in the room knew that, you know, Mike had made a decision. We'd, we'd spoken about it a lot, you know, conceptually, and it you know, it seemed like he was leaning that direction, but, you know, it was a very tough decision for him. I mean, he's an incredible football coach, and he loves coaching young men and, and doing the things that he clearly does at a level that almost nobody in America does better than him. And and so, no, I'm just going to work doing my job every day, and, you know, I didn't need to burden him with any more than he already, as he characterized it properly, has a, a way of life as a football coach. So, you know, that's something known as divisional labor, so I'll do my job and hopefully – do it, you know, so people will appreciate the value, and and obviously Mike's done it at a level that everybody loves. Matt, what what's the biggest immediate priority do you think for a new athletic director coming in? Or? Well, given the economy, you know, one of the thing, one of Mike's great skills is leader, uh, and he's a natural born leader. He has credibility that 
second to none uh, in the you know at the University of Oregon athletics, and so you know we have to broaden our donor base, and uh, because a lot of people are hurting right now, and so Coach Bilotti is going to have to work very very hard with you know with the, our staff to try to make certain that we continue to raise money, uh, sell tickets, and and continue to be self sustaining, and and he absolutely gets that. Football coaches make two million a year. Athletic directors make a lot less. Can you, have you a agreed to a contract and an amount? And b did the money at all enter into it in terms of what you're giving up in income to, to take this job? <laughs> um, up until about three months ago, no. But um, no, uh, you're right. Uh, football coaches make significantly more than athletic directors. We have not finalized any contract yet because. Obviously, this decision was made a day or two ago. I expect I'll be paid, uh, in all honesty, commensurate with a national level and a Pac-10 level for ADs. Uh, I don't know length or term of contract. Uh, it'll, I'm sure it'll be a 75% decrease in pay minimum, something of that nature, um, without the opportunity to do the others. That, again, much like... The football team I may or may not have had coming back, it was not a factor in my decision. Uh, it's something that the time felt right, uh, and I feel good about the people I'm handing the program off to. Uh, I feel good about the people I'm going to work with. And those things to me, timing in life is everything. And if you did it based on the stock market or you did it based on those kind of things, I think you'd be missing the boat. So, um, And the other thing, too, I. The timing is probably not good from the standpoint of all the basketball issues that may be coming up. It was not intentional. My my timeline, again, understand, was about spring football, the opportunity to get a coach in here, the opportunity to let Chip do what he needs to do. Um, and it's unfortunate because I – and I really don't. Up until two days ago, I've been doing my job as a football coach and, and actually doing it probably to a greater degree away from Eugene than I ever have, not just – through circumstances. I was gone 15 days in February after the signing date working with Nike speaking clinics and the NC2A Rules Committee, the Nike trip, uh, site survey tours for our uh, Casanova Center uh, concepts and things like that. So I really don't feel I'm in any position to give a lot of input to coaching evaluations. I will be available certainly to evaluate uh, or if there's perspective from a coaching standpoint, I can volunteer that information, but it'd be very generic. But if there are changes, I mean, you'll have to have a comfort level with... Yeah, I would hope that obviously I'd be involved, if if there were any changes, that certainly then I would be talked to and be. I would certainly be on a committee or be have input to that. But again, those decisions, I'm not in a position to really understand or evaluate programs. I hope I, obviously I will be eventually. Mike, how would you describe your meeting yesterday with the team and what, what kind of feedback did you get from the players? Um, you know, uh, I met first with my staff at 8.30 and wasn't sure I'd make it through that. I did. I felt good about that. Uh, I called uh, about 10 or 15 people uh, between 8.30 and 10 o'clock and let them know. And I, each time I got better about it. And then uh, talked to my team and um, broke down about halfway through, but recovered and finished. Um, it was, uh, you know, it, it was emotional, obviously, as you would anticipate and expect. Um, but at the same time, uh, my message to them, and I hope they got it, and you probably should ask them more than me, was just that uh, what we have started, they need to finish, and that. Uh, to be aware of I'm not leaving them, I'm moving down the hallway. Uh, I will still have a special connection to the group of young men that are in this program until they graduate, and they better graduate, and that there will be changes, and they need to support those changes and continue to work towards a national championship. So it was, you know, it, was, it went longer than I thought it would originally. I thought it was going to be very short, and then I had to, Take time to recover and then finish what I want to say. But Mike, what were your thoughts? Uh, when, you know, one at a time, AJ. Uh, what were your thoughts when uh, Coach Bly gave you the news? 
the official news or in when, you found out. when I found out that game's on. They'll be ready to go. You know, I was, I was, it, to be honest with you, it was bittersweet. You know, and, and, and uh, Mike said the meeting yesterday was emotional. Mike cried, our players cried, I cried. You know, it's uh, a changing of the guard. And when you watch someone that has given so much of his time to this university to finally say that he's going to leave, it, it, it got emotional for us. So, you know, it, it wasn't as much as I'm excited, and, and I am excited about the opportunity, but it was, you know, kind of put things in perspective of what this is all about and, and that it's an unbelievable game, and it's, it's about people. And if you watch the reactions and the emotions that were in the room, then it, it really validated why I was here and, and why I want to be a part of it, and that's really, you know, it just kind of made me feel this is a special place. Mike, so I did two other questions. Mike, uh, you've obviously been wildly successful. 70% win, six bowl games. You came close to playing a national championship game three times. Uh, does, does a part of you feel, <coughs> Bill, that, because that's been a goal of Oregon's for 15 years to get to that level, does a part of you feel a little, uh, professionally a little unfulfilled that you couldn't quite get the team there? Um, there are probably a lot of things in my life I feel a little bit unfulfilled about. Um, certainly, yeah, would I have liked to coach in a national championship? Yes. Do I think it's possible here? Yes. Uh, do I think sometimes events conspired against us? Possibly. Um, but the reality is, uh, again, each year I evaluate it more on did we reach our potential? Uh, did the young men give us everything that they have? And those things... I can walk away feeling very good about that. Uh, and I think, too, it's a, it's a continual process of growth. You know, there's never really a time, until now, that you can ever really say and look back and sort of start to figure out what you think about things. I, I've been asked many times, well, what's the highlight of your career? And I always say, well, I hope it's still to come. I don't know. And I don't think you know until you end it. Um, and now, obviously, I hope I'm on the sidelines of the national championship again. But I'll be as an AD instead of a football coach, and I'm okay with that. What's the highlight of your career now that football's over? I don't know. I haven't had time to really think. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you this: I think still the very best coaching job ever by me and my staff was 1996. You weren't even here, so you have to look that up. But by far, so. Coach Kelly, when you came over here. Two years ago from New Hampshire, in a million years, would you have thought that two years later you would become the head coach of the U of O? Yes. No, I, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Try to put some, it gets a little emotional when Mike starts talking about those things. But no, you know, I, I just, Mike called me and, and it was an opportunity to, you know, I think sometimes you got to leave the nest to better yourself. And, and I was in a pretty comfortable situation in New Hampshire. Um, leaving my family and friends back there was a difficult situation for me, but it, I just felt like at the time it was a challenge, and I was excited about accepting that challenge. You know, that I think two years later I'd be sitting there being named the head coach. No, not at all. Did you ever think you'd be named head coach? Here? Yeah. Or ever? No, I'd, you know, I, I think the one thing I've always worked on is that is that be happy with the job you have. And I know some tremendous football coaches that aren't in coaching right now. You know, and, and, and uh, one of the, the things that always hits you as a coach is when you go to the national convention, you see guys scrambling for jobs. And you just kind of walk away, thank, thank goodness for the one I have. And I think if you always look at, you know, I wish I had that job, I wish I had that job, then you're not doing your due diligence in the job you have. And, and I love coaching football, you know, no matter what level it was at, whether I was at Johns Hopkins University, or whether being the head coach at the University of Oregon. It, it's about going to work each day. It's never been about a status thing that I want to be the head coach at this program or all these other things. It's just I've kind of taken that stuff as it comes. And... The beauty is in the coaching itself. It's not where you're at. It's the people that you're with. And, and the people that I get to coach with every day from Mike on down are unbelievable. And that's that's what this place is all about. So has it sunk, yet, sunk in yet that you're going to be the head coach of the premier program in the nation? No, I haven't gotten any nasty emails. They've all been congratulatory so far. So <laughs> Mike's, work, Mike's, Mike's made me aware of that. So. <laughs> um, you know, the second guessing and all that other stuff. But that, that all comes with the territory. And, and, and you know about that. So has it sunk in? No. Well, first off, I love dealing with you, Ross. Right? <laughs> nice yeah. I mean, is there any trepidation or concern on your part about, about how, how things might change a little bit? Are you going to have to get away a little bit from the part you know so much to deal with everything else? 
coach. Yeah, but that's part of the challenge. And, and I think that excites me, you know, to find out that part of it. And I think, again, you get to find out, you know, test yourself. And, and when you wake up every day and you're st- there's new challenges for you, it, that I look at those as uh, opportunities for me, not something that I'm nervous about this or nervous about that. Um, you know, and again, I've said all the time, I have a great resource right down the hall. If I need help, I can go to them. But th- that stuff, I think, is part of the job. And, and uh, I wouldn't have accepted if I didn't think I could do it. Do you think you can have another coach in here by the start of spring? That's what we hope for. But again, we're bound by the state rules. So whatever, you know, we'll go through the exact process of how that is. If, if we don't, we'll deal with that as, as it comes. But we're going to we'll work as hard as we can on our part. And we're working with uh, human resources and what we have to do to get that done. Do you have to play any groundwork in that regard? No, no, I think as a coach, and, I, and I, I've learned from Mike, is that you always have a list of people that you're going to go to. It's not like one day you wake up and the coach is gone, and you're like, oh, what do I do right now? You know, I think ever since I've been involved in this, when you meet people, you have an opportunity to say, that guy's pretty sharp. Maybe someday I'd like to work with him. Um, but a lot of circumstances are involved. You know, hey, who's available? What's their situation? Are they ready to leave? Can they do all that? But I, I again, we're going to look throughout the entire nation and hire the best possible candidate. Mike, you've had a number of successful offensive coordinators who, under you, were successful and then moved on and had great success. Could you just elaborate a little bit more what distinguishes Chip Kelly, in your mind, to be the guy that to take over the reins? And, and or I compare him individually with each with previous offensive coordinator, but he's had such great success there. Don't take this wrong. Chip is here right now. That's the first reason. Uh, timing in life is everything. Secondly, he is as talented as any I've ever had. And the one thing about whether you're the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, especially, I let those people coach. I entrust them with responsibilities. And uh, our offense over the years has done a very good job. And for whatever reason, you know, fans tend to glom on to the offensive side of the ball. They want to see points scored. We've done it at a record-setting level with Chip. Uh, Chip is not just an offensive football coach. So he's He was an offensive line coach at one time. That actually uh, was one of the reasons that really intrigued me because he understands football from the ground up, from the front levels, from the, the line of scrimmage. And I think that's very, very important. He's coached on both sides of the ball. Uh, he can recruit. He can recognize talent. He can direct coaches and players so um, and I've had other offensive coordinators that are now head coaches have been head coaches are working other places that are who are very very good but I don't know if we've ever had the degree of success offensively we've had with chip and I think uh, our talent level is good but there were other teams that were probably as talented obviously with the no huddle concepts that's changed and skewed some of the statistics, but it's still, we are ahead of the curve in what we do. And I saw that four years ago, we made that change. Uh, Chip was the guy when Gary Croton left that I truly believe was maybe the only guy that I knew that could help us get even better because of his understanding of it uh, and his ability to teach it and present it in a manner uh, that our players could understand and could execute on the field. And that's the one thing, too. I, I, there are great coaches out there. And Chip has said it. Some great coaches who their aspirations have taken them out of jobs. Other great coaches who are great on the board, but it doesn't always translate to the field. And I think what you see with Chip is that his ability to be creative and innovative doesn't stop on the chalkboard. It goes to the field itself. Chip, your short list of coaches, are, are they people you've worked with in the past and do they have to come from a spread option background? No, they're not. They're not. There's a, you know, I, I won't limit myself to that. You know, just because I haven't worked with them, I know somebody that worked with them, um, or I've had the opportunity to observe them coaching. You know, and I've said this a lot. One of the great things about when I was at New Hampshire is that everybody let me come visit their campus. And I saw a lot of coaches coach during spring football. And, and you know, probably more so. You know, a lot of schools right now, I don't think I could call Cal right now and say, can I come down and watch spring ball? I don't think Coach Steffer would be excited about that. When I was at New Hampshire, I was allowed to do that. So when, whenever I took those trips, I, I watched different people coach, and, and I watched their techniques, and I watched their styles. And, and it, to me, a football coach can coach a lot, of different play, uh, a lot of different positions, and that's why I don't want to pigeonhole myself and say that I have to get this guy. I want to get the best coach, and I think the best coach is, is the person that, that – 
is an educator first and foremost and, and can take it, like Mike says, from the chalkboard to the field. And so there's a list of people that I have, um, and I'll continue to expand that list a little bit. If I, and um, there, there's not none of them right now that I've actually really spent a lot of time working with on my staff. Where does recruiting ability fit into your evaluation? Everything. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, you just uh, you can't get one guy that can do everything. I'm basically, if you use a baseball analogy, I want a five-tool guy. You know, I don't want a guy that's all hit, no field. You know, I think uh, you can't afford to have a liability on one side or the other. And, um, you know, that's what our staff here is. You know, I, I think the guys that are in place right now are unbelievable. Um, they're great recruiters. They're great teachers. They're great role models. And, and uh, I don't think it's very hard to attract someone to come here. So there will be more than plenty qualified candidates for the position. Have you guys talked to any of the incoming recruits or pending recruits and got there? Yes, uh, we, uh, after our, the team meeting, um, we, I sent an email to every single recruit explaining what was going to happen. Chip has called a, a vast majority. I text a couple guys that we did not have email, so every single one has been at least notified that way. And I've, I told them if they have any questions, concerns, or problems, to call me. Uh, and I haven't heard from anyone <coughs> because obviously we made that pretty clear uh during the recruiting process that it was an open-ended decision and you know uh, at the time uh, i considered and thought it could go another year could go two but it also could change in three months and i think we're very honest and open with that in the recruiting process i've spoken to about half of them and i'll i'll get to the other half by the end of the day today so and they've all been great they all understood the situation they're excited that mike's going to be in the building so <coughs> Any other recruits that are out there? I know you can't comment directly about them, but, but anybody, you know, I'm thinking of one person, but if there's anybody out there, um, does this help or hinder that process, do you think, you know, the adventure um, I Let me address this initially. Um, I believe there's a letter of intent somewhere in cyberspace right now for us, and I think that we will add another receiver. Uh, and it's already done. We're just waiting for the official announcement. We can't announce it yet. Uh, obviously, there's another recruit that we're actively involved with, but Chip has been the point man on, in terms of recruiting him, and I feel like uh, his decision would, wouldn't have mattered because we discussed it openly that I may or may not be here. And I, I think, again, Chip has been the point man, and you have to be careful, obviously. You know that. I'm not going to break any NCAA rules on my first day. So. Yeah. <laughs> coach, have, have you heard from any of your other coaches in the pack or any other coaches uh, that you know in the, in the fraternity? Have, have they called with messages of congratulations? What kind of comments have you heard from some of your peers? Um, I've heard mixed messages from a lot of my peers. Uh, I mean, that they're, they're good. Yeah, I've heard from people in the pack then. I've heard from people across the nation. It's, it's neat. Uh, some were joking, some were congratulatory, some were uh, lamenting the decision. It just, you know, it's the full gamut. Um, and I probably will hear from more in the future. Uh, again, most people were aware that uh, that was already on the table. And uh, I think coaches are creatures of habit to a great degree, and they can't understand why anybody would, why would you walk away? But the reality was, obviously, unless you walk in somebody's shoes, you don't know. So... Uh, but yeah, I've heard from a lot of people. Are there any more questions? How did your families take it? Like both your families, how did they take the notice that there would be a significant change? Um, mine was good. Mine was probably 50 50, I think, you know, about it. Um, but my family only knows one lifestyle, you know, and, and obviously that's going to change a little bit. Um, but I, I think they were they were good. Uh, it's you know again it wasn't something that came out of the blue, um, and I'm still going to be involved. I'm still going to be working. I'm not retiring, so uh, I'm hoping to have more family time and a little bit more quality time with my wife and kids. Uh, you know we'll see what happens with that. Uh, I know that there's a different level of stress with the AD job and a different level of time commitment. Um, but, 
you know, and I'll let, I think Chip should answer that too, though. You know, my, they were very excited, you know, but it, it just really is not going to change for me. My schedule will be the same, and I just went from being in the passenger seat to driving the car, but nothing else besides that has really changed. So. Any other questions? I want to thank you for your time. Um, any questions? If anyone did not get a release, uh, I've got some here. And I'm sure we'll be sure. Pat, if you're still there, I thank you for your time. Yes, I am. Anything else you want to add, Pat? No, no, I just I really appreciate where we're going and where we're going, and thanks to uh, Coach Bloody and Coach Kelly for being, you know, part of this institution. We're very lucky to have them, and uh, everybody have a great day. Go Ducks. Uh, thanks,